And so a lot of that work, uh, the most kind of crucial work that actually uh, helps move the company forward is not actually the most fun work, I would say. Hi everyone, this is Jay from Data Science Jay and Interview Query. And today I wanted to do a uh, video on basically why I decided to quit my data science job and then make this kind of like the first part of a uh, data science business vlog series um, talking about just uh, how Interview Query was formed, uh, kind of give updates on what we're trying to build to cater directly to data scientists and how we build data science into our product, right? And I think the general data science journey is also kind of like interesting in itself because there aren't that many data science uh, businesses out there or specifically I would say data science uh, kind of bootstrap businesses um, that we are effectively. Uh, and I'll kind of dive more into that, but I would say that, um, you know, actually doing uh, data science and then moving into like a startup, uh, there's definitely a lot of uh, parallels uh, and also just a lot of uh, things that I think about that I don't think are top of mind for most, uh, you know, bootstrapped indie hacker type businesses that are just trying to make uh, money within like a certain niche space, right? And I think uh, the interesting part is applying data science to a bootstrap startup is really hard and we try to uh, do it as much as we can and even then we can't really do it that much. And so this whole video series is about how we try to basically apply data science to our own business and effectively um, kind of show you guys basically what uh, data science looks like uh, for a two-person startup. Uh, and so, yeah, that is the overall background. Let me actually dive into the uh, goal of this video, which is more about kind of like why I quit my job and then how Interview Query got started. Uh, so, yeah, I guess starting out, um, I'll talk a little bit about my background. I worked as a data scientist for about four years after um, graduating college before deciding to actually quit and start Interview Query. And so how did I actually get to the point where um, I wanted to quit and start uh, a startup, right? And I'd say that, um, you know, before I actually did have aspirations of running a startup, but honestly never really thought of it as uh, a huge priority. I think it was more of a priority to me or like some sort of dreamland fantasy thing because I thought that was really like the only way to get to uh, financial independence and just make a lot of money in my lifetime, uh, given the fact that it seemed really hard to just uh, make a lot of money in tech uh, at that time when I was in college. Uh, nowadays, after starting Interview Query and seeing how much money uh, some of our members are making once they graduate, uh, that is definitely not true. And also being a data scientist myself, uh, I know that uh, as you work yourself up through the ranks, you can definitely make a ton of money uh, as you uh, get more and more senior in the field. Uh, and I would say that um, ultimately, uh, it wasn't really about money anymore as well uh, when I quit. Uh, it was definitely more about uh, doing something fulfilling. And I felt like after working in data science for four years uh, and switching between three different jobs, it uh, felt like if I switched to another data science job at that time, it wouldn't have been any better uh, or any more fulfilling uh, and just more of a continual cycle of like the same thing. Because at that time, I had already done most of the data science jobs out there at this point. Uh, there was uh, kind of like the machine learning engineer role, which I did at Jobber, which was deploying uh, you know, data science and recommendation engines, um, testing to see if we you know, got better matches, uh, and basically uh, doing all the machine learning, data engineering, data science part uh, that you have to do at a startup. And then I also had tried the more kind of like product analytics side, uh, almost like PM slash data analytics uh, role in which you work you know, with a product manager, you work with engineering, you work with marketing, and you basically uh, try to move the product, uh, move the needle on the product and actually uh, you know, affect the business uh, in different ways and try to push the company forward. And I'd say that that side was also you know, super interesting when I started it. Uh, I did that at uh, Jobber and at Nextdoor as well. And ultimately, you know, after working at Nextdoor for a year, I decided that 
you know, it wasn't something that I wanted to continue to do, and I did actually want to do a startup. And I think that a lot of that uh, kind of boils down to the fact that uh, data science as a whole is super interesting. It's a super interesting topic. Uh, it's very easy to get engrossed in it, but many times a uh, lot of the stuff in industry can kind of tire you out and bring you out, and I'll talk about why. What happened in which uh, made me want to quit my job as a data scientist? Uh, I would say that uh, data science in general was, uh, the good parts were about kind of analyzing data, providing insights, uh, and kind of being this like data magician, right? Where you're taking like basically a database uh, and doing data work, and everyone thinks that the insights and the stuff that you do is essentially magic, right? Where your uh, machine learning is essentially, you know, magic to anyone who doesn't really know how it works. Uh, even though, you know, we all know that it's generally, I mean, as in data science, it's pretty self-explanatory, or at least um, when I run, like, you know, scikit, learn, train, something, it's like it's very, very easy. But I would say that. Um, Data science in general, uh, a lot of that stuff, uh, all the training, like you know, the making predictions, all the fun stuff of data science is really tough to do sometimes uh, when you're applying it to uh, actually working within a business, right? Uh, because at a whole, like a business in general is hiring you to do um, a specific task many times uh, and also uh, making sure that whatever you're doing is moving the company forward, right? And so a lot of that work uh, the most kind of crucial work that actually uh, helps move the company forward is not actually the most fun work, I would say. And I think the people that succeed the most uh, in kind of like corporate structures or um, general uh, the corporate environments are the ones that can actually grind, you know, for eight hours a day, ten hours a day, twelve hours a day for many years and actually, uh, you know, get through and do the things that need to be done. It's really hard for me to work on uh, tasks that I am not interested in, right? And I think that's uh, the case for a lot of people as well. But as a whole, um, you see, you know, these huge tech companies popping up. Um, I would say that everyone who is an individual contributor, um, the best thing that you can do for your boss is to effectively work um, very hard and work on the things that actually matter and do them in a very well-timed, easy manner. Okay, so. I think that in itself is like one big reason for why uh, I decided to quit was because of the fact that uh, you know if you want to grind in like the corporate life uh, you can and you'll do really well in life right but if you have different kind of core values you have different um, values on how you, you want to live your life um, how you what like what you want to actually do with it um, then you kind of have to uh, change it up and try something new and I think uh, the easiest way to do that for, I think, almost everyone who's uh, working these day jobs in tech is to just quit and try a startup, right? Um, it doesn't mean that a startup is easy and that you don't have to grind. Actually, I think you have to probably you have to grind on stuff uh, even more often uh, because now it actually matters uh, and you're the only person one that you can depend on, right? Uh, but I would say that uh, the difference be uh, becomes, uh, you know, working on something that uh, doesn't really affect your compensation or doesn't really affect uh, any sort of value back to you, right? Like if you work at a company, you get equity and so ostensibly you should be working hard to you know, increase the value of that equity. But by the point of where you're getting to like a 50 person company or a 100 person company or a 1000 person company, right? It becomes really hard to really see that uh, benefit that what you're doing is actually affecting the company itself because there's a whole bunch of different myriad of factors that can really change uh, how the business grows or how it does in general, right? And so I think the one biggest thing about startups and the one thing about um, data science within a startup is the fact that uh, startups uh, are directly affected by your work. And I think that that is probably one of the biggest reasons for why um, I decided to quit was because I wanted to actually uh, really see my work being reflected in uh, the outcome of uh, the business, right? And so if, if a business is growing and it's actually doing really well, then you can point to it and you say that you did it. Um, you could probably do that you know, at any other company as well, but uh, you have to have that intrinsic motivation to be able to push through 
all these different things, you know, office politics, you know, someone who doesn't like you or um, convincing like 10 people at your team to like do something. Uh, all that stuff is really difficult. Um, takes a lot of emotional energy. Uh, and I'd say that uh, in general, it's uh, people are wired differently. And I think some of the things that uh, it comes down to is just your general core values. And so uh, I would say a last kind of note as I before I go off topic is that data science in general, the good parts are really interesting, but the bad parts can be the fact that uh, if you work in data science, you can be like a SQL monkey. Essentially, you might not have as much product direction as you want um, as a data scientist, and that everyone is kind of depending on you to be like the data quality person, right? And so effectively, I'd say that, uh, you know, our whole job at Interview Query is to get you a great job in data science, but uh, in general, it's good to be cognizant of these things because it always comes up. To pivot a little bit, uh, basically, last year, um, back in January of 2019, I started interviewing data scientists at Nextdoor uh, and also just like data science interns for the data science internship. And I found that most of them, uh, when we gave them these SQL challenges, uh, could not do them like effectively at all. And it made complete sense because no one, uh, if you don't have any experience with SQL, then you're not going to get good at SQL, right? And you will never have experience at SQL because of the fact that uh, SQL is only used for um, companies that have databases, right? Like everyone knows pandas. Uh, everyone can just pull in like a Kaggle data set and analyze it. But you're never going to have access to a production database. And so um, what I realized was that like these candidates could actually have, uh, if you just gave them a little bit of tips, a little bit of preparation, probably like an hour, of prep time beforehand, tell them what to expect, um, they would have probably done pretty well on the interview instead. And so, uh, you know, this is kind of half, it's, it's a problem with how, you know, companies conduct interviews, and then half of it is also just in terms of like, how do you prepare for a job uh, before you actually start it, right? You know, there's learning on the job, but then there's also just like learning before you uh, even try to apply to a job to prepare yourself for um, all these like roles in industry. And I think um, when we came up with interview query, it was uh, first just like an email newsletter uh, designed to give the solutions to interview questions uh, the next day and pro uh, provided that it was very similar to like the interview questions that uh, companies were asking in their data science interviews, right? But ultimately, I think now we've kind of grown it to the fact that we realize that um, this is kind of like uh, upskilling or just on the job training uh, for a lot of data scientists, right? Um, especially if you're, uh, you know, you don't have that much experience in data science uh, in an industry, uh, our job is to basically just prepare you for uh, that kind of training before that you actually have to go and do it on the job. Um, after doing the interviews with some candidates, I uh, initially, actually before starting interview query, I did a search on Google uh, for data science interview questions and found everything was pretty bad, not relatable. Um, I looked at some competitors, uh, just the, generally the interview questions were pretty bad as well. And so essentially all I did was, um, while at my job, um, before work or after work, I would essentially just sit there and just write um, interview questions and then write the solution for them and try to think about how I'd teach this to someone who had never actually uh, done any interviews before, right? Or ha how to teach it to someone who had never uh, really understood uh, these kinds of fundamentals of data science and just kind of uh, see if they could learn it. And I think that, um, you know, when you start a business, you have to start out small, uh, do an MVP. And when we launched it, right, we got actually uh, one, like, sign up in terms of uh, a person who actually paid for the solutions uh, because the freemium version was that you would get the questions every single day. Uh, and then the premium version was that you would get a solution the next day, right? And so uh, one person paid for it. Uh, I messaged her on LinkedIn telling her to check it out and she instantly signed up and paid for it. And I was like, wow, amazing, $12. Uh, and I think that exhilarating feeling of making money from uh, something that you built uh, that goes directly into your pocket is uh, something that is, uh, you know, it's, it's very uh, cathartic in general. Um, and I think that, you know, now we've grown to a lot more revenue than just, uh, you know, $50 a month. 
uh, which it was, you know, last year uh, back in June. And uh, it still doesn't beat that initial feeling, right? Because you start from zero and then you make some more money. Uh, and so initially, uh, you know, we just started as a newsletter and it kind of grew into now what it is as a website where you can practice uh, interview questions, problems, uh, and we try to build the most relevant features for all of our users, right? And so by November of last year in 2019, I had actually, um, we were at around, I'd say $3,000 a month in revenue. And I just decided that it was time to quit because uh, at that point, um, you know, I think I was at one year at my job. Uh, I felt like this was the thing that was making me fulfilled and waking me up every single day. And I didn't want to do the work at my actual job. And when you're, you know, when your expectations are not aligned with the company's expectations, then uh, at least for me, it was time to quit. And I think uh, many people can still run successful side businesses uh, while they're working at their company. And I probably could have as well. But at the same time, um, I think I had different priorities in life in which outside of work was also really important, right? If you think about uh, the many different hours that you have in a day, you know, like 16 hours besides sleeping, um, I only wanted to dedicate maybe like six to eight hours of that towards working, unless I was really interested in my work, which I could be, right? But at the end of the day, like I would rather surf, you know, at Ocean Beach or in San Francisco uh, at 9 a.m. instead of attending stand-up. Uh, and having that flexibility uh, for a kind of bootstrap business is like one of the really interesting parts and one of the things that I really enjoy as well. Uh, same for my co-founder as well. I think um, if you have, if you pick someone who, uh, if you start a company with a co-founder with similar moral values, then it's going to be uh, a lot better. Uh, I say, sorry, core values, <laughs> maybe not moral values, but probably good to have moral values as well. We are all about getting uh, people more interested in data science. Uh, I don't think anyone should be discouraged by my long rant about <laughs> why data science is hard at uh, corporations. I think it really does kind of just depend on uh, your core values. Uh, and I think my goal as a whole is to find what was interesting about data science and introduce it back into uh, the business that uh, we are running because of the fact that the stuff that you're corely interested in is probably what will keep you um, working every single day and interested in a project. And uh, probably that interest is probably infectious towards other people and you, uh, more people will join uh, as well. And I think uh, for us, our goal um, ultimately is always to make interview query the best data science uh, preparation product uh, by using and utilizing data science uh, at its core. And I say that for the next couple of videos, I want to show how uh, we run analytics on interview query, how we do our um, ETLs, how we do our dashboarding, how we build in personalization, uh, and basically how um, we try to uh, make uh, a lot of the data science almost transparent and how we're trying to, um, uh, this will, video series will at least push me to start building out more data science uh, type models uh, and to production uh, for our own business, even if they are kind of unnecessary, but at the same time, um, I think it is wholly necessary now because of the fact that uh, data science business should exist, um, even if it's like content focused, uh, it should be prioritizing uh, data science in the product just to make it um, the ultimate meta great product for data scientists to use. Uh, so awesome, that's the end of my um, talk slash rant slash uh, scrambling. Um, this video was the hardest, I think, to ever make because uh, I wanted it to be perfect, but ultimately it's not. Uh, but thank you and subscribe everyone uh, and stay tuned for the next video on uh, our business vlog. Bye.